particular axle is a Dana 44 high pinion that is in my 78 Ford truck. It's the front end. Um, the construction of this is virtually identical to what you would find like in a Jeep's Dana 30 or something else like that. So on this particular axle, I don't have C-clips holding in the axle shafts. So the axle shafts actually just pull out. So let's just take all these bolts out. So at this point, if you had something like a Dana 30 or something else, you would actually push it in and there'd be a C-clip. You pull the C-clip off and then you would be able to pull the axle out. But this particular axle, like I said, just they just slide out. So now I gotta remove the bearing caps and any shims behind it, I wanna keep on that side. So I gotta be careful. Here we go. Ugh. So if you're doing this outside like I am, the last thing you wanna do is get dirt and dust all over in here so it's windy or anything else or just as a precaution because you don't want to get sand and grit up in your pinion or anything else like that because it'll be virtually impossible to wash off I'm going to take these pieces they're still clean I'm just going to set my cap my cover back on so no dust or anything else blows in here while I'm doing my other stuff so now we want to make sure we don't switch our bearing caps and stuff like that so I'm going to use just my paint pen here to actually mark that this is, this one is my driver. Um, just so I don't get them mixed up because they're bedded into each other. I'm not replacing the bearings. So come over here, we'll take this one off. And I like these pins. These are actually Sharpie brand. I picked them up. They're cheaper than some of the ones I've used in the past and they work phenomenal. I'll put a link below if you want to check them out. I've got a whole bunch of different colors, which is nice. Um, that's a passenger. And they still look good. So we need to remove the pin that holds all the differential spider gears together. And on some, supposedly, you can pull that pin out without removing the ring gear. But we need to remove the ring gear. I've marked um, it in the same spot. If it matters, I don't know. It probably doesn't. But we're going to actually remove all those bolts and pull that ring gear off. Now we have to remove this big large pin in the center and the, this is retained with a roll pin. Some of them are just a actual bolt and so I have to remove it out that way. So we have a um, an actual roll pin tool and this has been one of the neatest tools I've ever bought. I'll put a link to the ones I got below. They came with a nice wood case and everything. They're made by Tekton and the tip actually has a little dome on it so it, and a flat edge so it centers itself in the roll pin and doesn't mushroom it out. It makes them effortless to remove and install. I don't do that many roll pins, but when I do, it's absolutely amazing. And the roll pin's actually reusable where most of the time you'll end up mushrooming the end and you couldn't, you couldn't get it back in. So now that's out. And we can pop this pin out. There we go. Then all of my gears are going to start coming out. I should be able to rotate them. And you... We actually got a little chip on that one. Everything else is beautiful, but I did see that little chip in the bottom of the pan. But we'll remove them and their shims. We don't need any of that. There's that one and that one's shim. And these should just pull suctioned there it goes Just pull out along with its shim and this side and its shim now we can install the locker so this is what you would call a lunchbox locker there's a bunch of different brands this particular one is a spartan but you have your aussie locker and um there's another one i can't think of off the top of my head but they all have, a, they're basically all the same, but they have some different components. This particular Spartan locker, you don't reuse your thrust washers that went on the back of your gears here to go up in there. These ones are machined just right where you don't need those. So these can just go in bare. And so you just put both those in. You have these little uh, rings right here that actually cup. There should be two of them, one for each side. 
that actually cup towards the gear teeth. So how these work, if you're curious, is this is connected to an axle shaft. This one's connected to an axle shaft. These are essentially connected to the center pin. And the center pin's connected directly to this. So your pinion gear spins your ring gear and spins this entire assembly and essentially has all the force just on this one pin that is actually going to grab either side. So what happens is this pin is locked in here and here. And so when these teeth are engaged with those teeth, as this spins and as that spins, it actually moves both your axle shafts. But if you look right here, this is a sloppy, sloppy hole. This hole is actually a ramp. So there's actually gonna be a gap about like this with this pin through. And there's enough slop that when there is no tension on this ramp, as this ramp, as this has a lot of tension, what it does is it actually forces this out into that and locks them together. But if there's no tension locking those together, this is allowed to skip. So if you're turning or something else like that, one wheel does, won't have tension. And so it'll allow it to go, but or allow one wheel to actually slip. But as there's a, a significant amount of force applied to this pin and both wheels are able to bite and lock, it forces both out and locks both together. If you begin to turn in one wheel, because one wheel will want to turn fast and the other and one will have a little less slop, it'll be free, slide in, and then this will be allowed just to free spool on this side. And then once you have force against it again, locks in. So first thing we're doing, going to do is put it all in there together and measure the gap, because the gap, you need to make sure the gap is correct between this surface and this surface, between these two plates. You need to make sure you don't have too much gap or too little of gap. So we'll put it all in dry and then we'll go from there. Now I've dry fit it and made sure I was within spec and I am, it's in your instruction sheet, but make sure you have the correct gap. If you have too little of a gap, they'll never unlock. If you have too much of a gap, they'll never lock. So now I got to take it back apart. So now we made sure the surface between these is, um, the correct gap. So now we're going to install these little, I'm just going to use a little bit of grease just to hold the spring. We're going to install these little retaining pins. So just kind of holds it in there for a second. And now, this, these little pins, spring-loaded pins, actually ride in these grooves, and these ones ride in these grooves, and they kind of just keep everything pushed apart, pushed together, um, so it wants to be locked up and allowed to move freely. So there's a little hole on the outside, and they give you these little pins. We're able to slide all these in to push these down for install, and then we actually pull these out. So don't put this together until you made sure your gaps are correct and everything because these little buggers are kind of a pain in the butt to get apart once you're in this boat. Then we put a little bit of grease just in here just to retain these. These just kind of want to slop around a little more than you like. And make sure those are in the correct way. This particular locker. on The, the ones with a C-clip you have to make sure because this actually surrounds the C-clip and holds the C-clip on the axle shaft. There you go. And since you already dry ran it and fit it in, I don't need grease on there. This will hold itself. You know, the easiest way to get these in, this particular one I put in, and a lot of them that I've seen, you actually put in the uh, the side towards the uh, the ring gear first. Just put that in. We'll stand it up. And we'll slide in our next piece. Make sure it meshes so it's down as low as possible. We'll slide in our top. And 
And we'll slide in our last piece here. Get those lined up. Now we can pull those pins and that'll allow us to get everything else in place. So now I can grab pliers somewhere. Pull my pins. They're not completely lined up in the right spot. There it goes. But it'll they'll fall in. Just keep these this middle hole all lined up where you want it. Let's pull these retainers. There we go. And those two little cups are pushed off to each side out of the way. And so I can get this through. Otherwise, one of those little cups that was inside of this ring gear will slide in. So you just gotta make sure each one's on its own side. And now we can take our pin rotate this and this shouldn't be you shouldn't fight this I see people whacking the crap out of this I let those that little retaining cup fall this pin should slide in pretty freely like that and then it's just a matter of taking our new roll pin making sure our holes in place and actually driving it home with our fancy specialized pinch that out. Should have got that started before we did this. Now we'll get it started. Bottom out, beautiful. We are officially lockered. I'm gonna just slide the ring beer back up on and we'll just bolt it back down. I'm gonna use some blue Loctite. I've been using this stuff for a while. I've actually really enjoyed it. It's like a Loctite quick stick. So it's kind of like a glue stick, but it doesn't, you know, you squeeze out the Loctite and you just get a big glob of schmoo everywhere. This stuff, you just stick it up just like you would a glue stick. You can just smear some on the threads. You can get exactly how much you want worked in the threads. Screw it down. And I've cleaned all the bolt holes out with a uh, brake cleaner and dried them out so, so that the Loctite actually works. And then we'll just torque these up. This particular one is, um, these bolts are 55 foot pounds and my bearing caps are uh, 60 foot pounds. Now everything just in reverse. Just put everything back. Torque back down our cat bolts. Here we go. We've got some RTV on it. And now it's just a matter of throwing her on.